Okay, so for this video, we're going to actually take a look at how to create something uh, in Tinkercad to output for laser cutting or vinyl cutting. Uh, something that basically is two-dimensional. What's really great about Tinkercad is that it's a, because it's such an easy environment to move objects around and reshape them, it actually in some ways is easier to use than design programs like Illustrator uh, or even free programs like Inkscape. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you a project that um, our science department does here in eighth grade and recreating um, a periodic table. And so I'm going to build one for the element oxygen and I'm going to do so through uh, through the recreation and use of different shapes. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, uh, a border. This whole square, this whole grid is going to take up the, the periodic table element. And so I'm going to just take one here and this is uh, this block is going to become uh, part of that border. So one of the things, as you remember from earlier videos, is I can just take the sides and I can give them value here. So I'm clicking on, just as a quick review, I'm clicking on the edge handle, not the corner handle, but the edge handle. And if I actually click on it and then type the number, it gives me an exact value that I can put in there. So I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to change this to 200. Okay, and I'm going to do another one, uh, a hole this time, and I'm going to make this one 185, just going to approximate here, and 185, and let's see how those line up, good, so I'm going to, I'm going to align these two by selecting them both. And clicking the align tool up there and I'm going to align the centers this way and this way and then I'm going to group them hit group now I have a border so that's how I'll start and the rest is pretty simple so it just depends on what you want to bring on the screen I'm going to go get text and I'm going to t click there and type in the word oxygen we're going to do the element oxygen and once I click there, I can actually resize this if I want to. I can hold shift key down on my keyboard if I want to resize it without changing its proportion. Okay. And uh, the element also, whoops, don't need that. The element also uh, has the letter O at the top for oxygen. And I'm going to make it bigger. Again, I'm going to hold my shift key to make it bigger proportionately so. And if I want to take a good look at all of this, I can use the top button here on the top left. I can use the top and it'll look at it directly from above. And that will allow me to kind of uh, place things where I need them to be. Uh, this is element number eight on the periodic table. So I'm going to bring the number eight up here. And the last bit of text that I need for my particular element is the atomic mass unit. And in this case, that's 15.994. And this one's a little big, so I'm going to make it smaller. Like about like that. OK, so uh, you can see how this looks. And then the last thing that's required for this class, the science class that we do here, is the actual um, atom, the, the a diagram of the atom. And so the way I'm going to do that and lay it out according to the needs of the class is I'm going to bring in a circle. Again, I'm going to hold shift to keep the proportions the same. And with this ring, uh, I'm, I don't need it to be this thick. In fact, I want it to be pretty thin. So I'm going to make the thickness, let's say, uh, one. See how that looks. Okay. And the other thing to note about cylinders and other shapes, like this here, this flat surface that you can see here, that's considered a face. So if I look at these sides here, or sides it's called in this case, um, if I look at these sides, there are 24. If I want to give this a more rounded look, I can boost this up to something like 40, let's just say, and it gives it a much more rounded 
look. And that actually is significant when it comes time to, to vinyl cut or to laser cut because the those cutters are so precise they will cut at those angles or those edges. Um, so 40 is pretty good. It uh, looks fairly round this way. Uh, I don't need it this tall. I can just kind of bring it down a little bit. And then I'll make one more. Uh, this one will be... Uh, I'm going to hold my shift key, it'll be about that big. Okay, again, the, the sides are going to be around 40, and the thickness will be 1. And it can be a little flatter. And uh, one more in the circle, which is the nucleus, and that just needs to be a cylinder, so I'll leave that in there. And so once I have these, I can select all of them and I could go back to align we've done this before and I'm just gonna align their centers so they're nice and centered and I'm gonna look at this from the top okay now the last thing I need here are the actual um, electrons and so I'm gonna bring in this one make it a little oops I'm still in align mode so I'm gonna click away from there uh, I can make this a little smaller maybe 15 or something uh, maybe even smaller. I'm going to go with 12. And I'm going to align them up according to what I need. And so uh, here's, I'm going to use these techniques that we learned in earlier videos, which is if I hold my option key down, I can click and drag a, a, a second one. And if I hold my option key down again, I can keep making more of these, right? And if I hold my option and shift key at the same time, I could actually make a new one and keep it at the same uh, the same plane or the same line. So we can do that. Oops. Try that again. We can do that with this one as well. And that's two, four, two, four, six. I need two more. Okay. Now here's the key. When you're all done, it looks great. Uh, it looks like something that you, uh, you know, could could uh, 3D print out, but in order to actually vinyl cut it or laser cut it, we are going to actually have to drag all of these things into the work plane. And what I mean by that is if you look at how they're currently set up, the work plane or the blue grid is underneath all of them, okay? But we need them to actually go through the plane in order for us to export a file that can be vinyl cut or laser cut. So I'm going to grab all of them and you can see here that the selection tools are the four corners of course and the four edges and then this one um, uh, height um, handle but then at the very top is this cone and this cone is what allows us to change the elevation of any object or group of objects in this case so I'm gonna take that cone I'm gonna click and hold it and I'm gonna drag it down just a couple of steps or just like three millimeters and what that did is it now brought all of those elements through the grid. You can see the grid is right here. The work plane is right there. So we've brought all these items through the work plane. And now that we have that, uh, we can go to export up on the top right. And we're going to select everything in the design. And this time, instead of STL, which is what we would normally use as a file format for 3D printing, we're going to download as an SVG. And by doing so, uh, that SVG file becomes a file that can be laser cut or vinyl cut. Okay, uh, that's all there is for this video.